Hi, this is Randy Wong. I'm a retina specialist located in Northern Virginia, which is right outside of Washington, D.C. This is a video of a retinal detachment, including the macula. The macula is that smudge, that yellow area next to the optic nerve. Unfortunately, the macula was detached, so this patient lost central vision in addition to peripheral vision. There um, are some of the retinal holes or tears that led to the retinal detachment. And I'll highlight those in just a second with some arrows. I'm doing a vitrectomy uh, while I'm inspecting the retina to basically plan uh, how the operation is going to go. Obviously, there's the areas of the retinal tears. Removing the vitreous allows me to uh, better manipulate the retina. The Detached retina is the whitish wrinkled area, and you can see the retina undulating uh, as I'm using the, vit uh, the vitrector. The attached retina is the top half of your screen and is a clearer color or is in better focus, and that is attached retina or normal retina. Again, this is a regmatogenous retinal detachment, and those are the holes uh, that led to the retinal detachment. Every regmatogenous retinal detachment starts with either a retinal hole or a retinal tear. In this case, these are old retinal tears, and they've become round. It doesn't really matter for uh, argument's sake uh, exact, the exact configuration of the hole or tear, but uh, just from experience, I know that these were a older retinal tears and they kind of round it out instead of the typical what we call horseshoe uh, configuration. The goal of the operation in the beginning is really to kind of debulk the vitreous to get it out of the way. Uh, that improves our chances of reattaching the retina at the uh, over the long haul. Again, once the macula is detached, uh, there's kind of less urgency. The central vision is involved. Our goal is usually to diagnose and treat a retinal detachment before central vision becomes involved. If you see there right at 12 o'clock, right by my uh, vitrector, there's another retinal hole or tear which did not detach. And I'll show you that I'm going to treat that with laser in just a second. One of the ways that we can treat retinal tears in addition to laser is with cryotherapy. And you'll see me use cryotherapy in just a minute. And what I'm doing is I'm actually freezing the eye from the outside in. So I want to freeze the areas of retinal tear or retinal holes. The effect is the same as uh, using laser. I can't always use laser uh, either in a detached retina or sometimes it's simply just too hard to see. And I can't effectively uh, treat the tear or hole that I'd like to. What I'm doing now is I'm using cautery or diathermy to mark the areas of the retinal hole so they're easier to see later on in the operation. I'm creating a retinotomy right there in that last white spot and this is where I'm going to drain the fluid. Uh, here's an example of using laser, I apologize for the bright green, to treat the undetached retinal tear. And this, is in, this ensures that the retina won't detach in the future from this area. Those are the three retinal tears that are the culprit. And again, there's the retinotomy that I, I'm going to create or the hole in the retina so that I can better uh, treat the retina. And I'm going to treat it by removing the fluid underneath the retina. Right now, I'm going to show you a couple examples of cryotherapy. And I've got a probe which is pressing on, on the eye, and we're freezing from the outside in. So you can't actually see the probe, but you can see the probe pushing on the eye. And as it freezes, the retina will turn white. And this will cause the areas of the tear to scar over in the next couple of days. And that's the key. The key to uh, fixing retinal detachments is to find all the holes or tears, treat them with either laser or freezing so that they cannot be detached once you've reattached the retina. 
If I were to reattach the retina and not treat any of the holes or tears, I guarantee we would redetach a week or two after this operation. And again, the core operation here is called a vitrectomy, and that's where we're going inside the eye to basically um, fix the retinal detachment from inside. So now those tears are uh, identified and treated. This is the area of the retinotomy. Uh, I put it in this area because it's easier for me to see uh, and to use. And what I've done is I've stuck an instrument through that uh, hole or the retinotomy. And I'm actually starting to remove the fluid that's underneath the retina. And in just a minute, you can see those air bubbles flowing into the eye. And what we're doing is something called a uh, fluid gas exchange. I'm basically removing all the fluid from the center of the eye and underneath the uh, retina, and I'm replacing it with air. And you can see, as you look at the stem of my instrument, you can see the water meniscus or the water level decrease in the eye as I'm removing the, the fluid. The purpose of this is to basically uh, reattach the retina and do so uh, with the proper uh, anatomic uh, relationships so that um, this enhances the chance of uh, vision being restored uh, without the retina shifting. Once I am able to remove the fluid underneath the retina, then I will laser around that retinotomy. It's too far back for me to use cryotherapy and I can easily get to it with the, uh, what we call the endo laser, which is the laser that's placed inside the eye. And you can see already that the wrinkled area is almost completely reattached and you can tell because the wrinkles are gone and there is no undulating tissue anymore. I have now completely removed all the fluid both underneath the retina and in the center of the retina and the eye is completely filled with gas. When there is no fluid underneath the retina, you may laser retinal holes or tears that you find. And I'm going to try and laser the retinotomy here. There's that grayish color that goes around. Uh, the retinotomy. I don't really like that. I think I could have done a better job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a little bit more fluid to enhance my ability to laser around the retinotomy. And again, this will induce scar formation so that the retina will not detach as the air gets absorbed or the gas gets absorbed and replaced by the eye's natural fluid in the next couple of weeks after this operation. I'm going to treat these areas again with laser just to make sure they do not detach again. And here we're gonna treat the third tear or hole. A couple areas that are suspicious over here so I'll do a little bit of laser there this area of the retina does not give us any useful function the patient is completely unaware that he or she has laser the last part of the operation is to simply exchange the air inside the eye for a with a gas the gas I use is uh, sulfahexafluoride I'm Randy Wong. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos and they are somewhat helpful to your understanding of repairing a retinal detachment. Take care. Bye-bye.